So today I am going to be painting Rekinor the Grim Hailer, and this was the first model I bought uh, when I started collecting Warhammer, and I decided I wanted it to be the last model to paint, simply because it is bigger than any other Nighthaunt model that I have. Um, so yeah, I wanted to save him for last, and I thought about for a while what I wanted to do for him. Um, at first I was going to kind of paint him similar to how the Dreadblade Harrows were painted, but the more I thought about it, the more I wanted him to look really unique and kind of um, just stand out uh, on the battlefield. So um, I did what I did with uh, Lydia Linder and Cardas Valencian. Uh, I took a look at what everyone else was painting. Um, I saw a few designs for uh, him being on like a red horse, and so that's kind of what I decided to do. I wanted his whole horse to just look like it was made of fire, um, and so for that I'm doing six colors. Um, I'm starting with a chaotic red, then going to dragon red, uh, or vampire red, dragon red, lava orange, mythic orange, and moon dust for edge highlights, which I did mess up on that. I think I blotted a, b a little bit too much moon dust on it, um, but I still think it looked really good uh, for the end project.
And this is definitely the longest project I've ever worked on, um, or I say project, longest I've ever spent painting a mini um, because of how much detail I wanted to have and all the little things that I did. Um, and just to make sure all the layers looked right, this model took me about seven hours to do. Um, so pretty slow, considering also I have to get up every now and then. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be doing, like I said, chaotic red all over and leaving chaotic red fully on the bottom, um, highlighting the tops, the rib cage, the face with vampire red, and then just going over it smaller and smaller up that line of color that I said. It's been a while since I've been able to post something, and one, it was that I got very busy, two, mostly, is that the video card I had died. Uh, it was a 1070 my friend had given me, or we bartered with, and it just gave out. So I, I didn't have a video card until a few weeks ago, so I was like three months without a video card. Um, so of course I couldn't do any editing or anything else I've been doing on my computer, um, and I just haven't had time to, to paint much of anything. Uh, I think since then I've, I've kind of looked around at a few different war games because I try to play Warhammer when I can. Um, but the more I play Warhammer, the more it just doesn't feel like it's clicking in the way I want it to. Um, as far as war games go, I really 
I mean, I grew up playing chess and m more importantly, Stratego. Stratego, I think, is really what really sparked joy in me for uh, strategy games in general. And I think that's what has always kind of drawn me to wargaming in general is that idea that I get to pick what my army is, I get to pick what units are set up with it, and then I get to place them on the board and engage the enemy. Um, I've just been very unsatisfied with Warhammer lately, and I started playing 9th edition, um, and I've played a few games in 10th. 10th is a little better. I think the changes they made were good um, because 9th felt like it had a lot of stuff, but none of that stuff really did much. Um, I think mostly what's what's kind of turning me off of it is just the turn order because for for your opponent or yourself even to get to do so much before um, before your opponent gets to respond in any way, um, it just kind of, for me at least, takes me out of the game. It's it's very hard for me to focus during Warhammer because I'm mostly just standing around waiting to see what they're going to do or just waiting for them to take their turn, finish up so that I can go and just all the while watching models leave the table, um, either because he rolled well or I rolled bad. Um, which that's the name of the game. Anything with dice, that's fine. But when you just have to wait <laughs> for so long before you're able to do any sort of maneuvers. And I think that's the point of stratagems, but the stratagems really don't help, in my opinion. Um, they're fine, but they don't really address... They're more like a band-aid than actually addressing the problem. Um, so I've been looking at some other things, and I have recorded... Um, painting conquest models because um, I was very interested in the Parabellum conquest game because um, it just looks so simple and fun to have that like really easy back and forth plus with the um, command card mechanic they use um, it just looked like a lot of intricate strategy that was also pretty fast paced um so i was very interested in that so i ended up buying two first blood box sets from them and um have them built and i have a few of them painted i just haven't had time for painting lately um but more than anything i have been looking into one page rules games. Um, I've seen a few things about them. I think Goobertown Hobbies did a video on them. And I've been watching this channel lately, Good Enough Gaming, um, which I really like. Um, I'm liking a lot of the more obscure war games. Uh, just because, as I said, as far as Warhammer goes, uh, it sucks because I love the lore. Um, I think the models look great. They're They're definitely fun to put together and paint. Uh, and I like my orc army, I like, um, I have a commander farsight model that I've bought and a skull taker model that I've bought. I definitely would love to sit and play and build armies for that game. It's just the game to me isn't satisfying. So, um, gravitated to some other things. I first heard about Grim Dark Futures uh, from a friend who had found it. I looked into it, found Age of Fantasy as well. And at first I wasn't so sure about it, but the more I read about it, the more I thought it'd be a good thing to try. And I finally got one of my friends, uh, friends in my gaming group to play a game with me. And he did Elven Jesters and I did the Rebel Gorillas. Um, so I wanted to try out, because if you, nobody's seen their army lists, um, a lot of them are basically one-to-one -one for... Warhammer armies and so I wanted to pick one of the ones that were kind of unique to that system and the rebel gorillas to me are like a cross between the Tau and the Imperial Guard um, they have a lot of 
you know, their infantry are small and kind of squishy, but they have really uh, good firepower. And they've definitely got a few um, beefy vehicles. Uh, and then they have like a marker light mechanic where certain units can have that and it works kind of like how it did in ninth edition where you have to roll and on a four plus you attach a marker light um i think it might work more like eighth edition because you could just remove as many marker lights to uh, improve your hit um so uh, but it was a ton of fun um did a thousand point game which is pretty small the army lists um honestly it's a thrill to build an army in the in the army builder because you get kind of building blocks and then every unit um they'll have certain special abilities that you can add for additional points and it really lets you dig as deep as possible to create the most like personalized army uh, that you can um, even going so far as on the army builder to kind of let you rename every unit um, which I did for fun on my rebel team I think I gave them all um, quote unquote tough guy names from the 80s so it seems <laughs> felt more like I was getting a cast of uh, from the original predator movie um, but yeah the 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 whole thing behind one page rules is it's just a super simple clean uh rule set um like all the main rules are on one page and then they have a second page with some special rules uh and that's it and it's just alternating activation so you all place down and then you just go back and forth picking units and we had set objective markers down um they've got a few game modes that you can play or you can just make up your own uh, we set some objectives down, but it just turned into deathmatch where you just kill the opposition. Um, and right out of the gate, he, he like looped around somewhere and destroyed one of my, my biker unit very easily. Um, <laughs> to the point where he, he took a step back and thought, oh, and playing Elven Jesters, Harlequins, you know, Eldari in 40k are very overpowered. But that's another thing I like about this game is nothing feels janky or broken. It all feels like when you bring equal amounts of points to the table, you have a very balanced game. Um, because the whole time it was a it was a very quick back and forth. The game took us we did a thousand points each. Took us maybe like uh, an hour, hour and a half. And that's with me looking up rules and, and making sure we were reading this correctly. Um, and that was it. It was super quick. And it came down to the wire. It was, um, it was a very fast back and forth and ended with a unit that I had just barely been able to keep um, two, three models in and... Uh, ended up taking out his last unit um, in round four. So what what we both thought was going to be like <clears throat> Harlequins adjacent Elven Jesters just coming in and cleaning house um, is actually a pretty quick, very, very good back and forth. Um, and I've, I left that game never like a I left that game being more satisfied than I ever had been playing 40k. Because the entire time I was engaged, I, I have a tendency to to lose focus really easily. So, to walk away from a game that I had been invested in from start to finish, that was constantly keeping me on my toes, that I constantly had to think about, okay, what is the best unit to pick right now for the activation? Can this unit wait around? Are they going to survive his next activation? So should I do this unit first to soften this one up? Pincer formation, blah, blah. There was just so much going on 
without it being too complicated and both like every army they have special rules they're some of them are similar some of them are unique um but yeah it, it was just so much fun like i was riding that high for <laughs> for like a day where i would i just sit and think about it like man this turn like his his jet bike came in and sandwiched my whole infantry platoon um and it took me you know three four activations to take him down but i finally did and then after that like oh, it was so cool how this happened and like even you know i fought back from what i thought was going to be a tremendous loss um and just kept playing over in my mind and like i can't wait for the next time i play that game again and i can't say that i've ever had that feeling with 40k because when playing with my friends either the dice hates me or the dice hates both of us and playing orcs in ninth edition was not fun <laughs> because as many orc models as there are you're very con you're very restricted uh, when building your army because okay you have to pill pick your subclass well within that subclass you know you can only have one war boss and you can only have these types of boss hero characters but you also have to fill out this detachment you know in the way you're supposed to fill detachments out um, and then you go and all orcs have are seven plus seven plus saves so if they get hit with any ap they're almost guaranteed dead um and it just didn't feel like orcs it, like every game my orcs would be so easily wiped off the table and it just didn't make any sense to me because these are orcs these are supposed to be these very tenacious um you know tough aggressive creatures and yet they were getting completely wiped off the table uh, like they were pesky flies more than you know anything else uh, so it was very frustrating it was frustrating playing um especially to sit there and wait for your opponents to take their turn for like 30 minutes and all the while he's just meticulously sniping your forces down and down by the time it gets to your turn you're like well i have a portion of my forces left I don't have the strength to deal with this right now, and I don't have the manpower to put pressure on any objective, so I can either scoop or I can draw this out for some experience. And that was the thing, is that when a game is three hours, you don't really get to get a ton of experience. So I was on a good losing streak for a year before I finally started to be like, okay, I have to play more so to the meta, I can't play in a, a thematic capacity. Like, I can't build an army around a certain idea or theme that I liked, and to that end, it did remind me a bit of like Magic the Gathering, where, okay, yeah, you can make a deck that you like and that it's, you know, it all fits together nicely and, and they all, it all makes sense in terms of like, a theme. But if you take that deck to play with anybody, they're gonna wipe the floor with you, and you're not—you're not gonna have fun. <laughs> you're not gonna have a fun day at the table. Um, and that's how it kind of felt like with 40k. Is like, okay, I have to—I have to have this, 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 this. This is the optimal way to build this army. And with 10th edition, it's a little more flexible. Thankfully, there's no like only one war boss rule anymore um so you could have a mega suit war boss you can have a regular war boss um you know and they brought a lot of uh leader units back that were gone they didn't print any new ones but they at least brought them back um yeah it's just it's it's just very interesting that stark contrast between this game took me an hour to play same amount of points would take me three and 40k and i'd come off feeling much less interested um so that was one page rules i'm, I'm super stoked about age of fantasy and they're 
basically the same game. Um, mostly just excited about it because Age of Fantasy has rules for a halfling army, which I am greatly obsessed with the idea of a halfling army. I think... I just like halflings in general. Just most of the media, like, they're just small town people um, who live very simple, kind of almost luxury lives uh, because they kind of, uh, they work the land and work with their community. And, uh, yeah, I just really like that. And I just like the idea of these people who are, who are very small and very rural and very, like, normally peace-loving, um, just building up a giant metal pig and charging into battle on chickens. Um, I just love it. So, I've put a couple lists together for a good halfling army, and I'm excited to to play. Um, Other than that, other than painting, I am looking to get into 3D printing mostly because while I like GW's models, a lot of the games I'm more interested are minion or model agnostic, and I'd rather have a 3D printer so I can either design or buy STLs to 
just print my own. Also, every time I buy a model, it's like, it's a model that I don't want to end up looking bad, so I'm not going to try to do anything too crazy with it. Uh, a 3D printer I would love to have because being able to print out like test models and test miniatures that you can kind of just play with and, and, and see what works and what doesn't. I feel like I see a lot of that in people's videos where if they do painting videos, they're, they're just doing something goofy and wacky because they have this army printed and they can print them all over again and, and do a bunch of test runs with them to see what looks best. Um, so I'm excited about that and just excited to use it to print terrain or whatever else I need. Um, probably cosplay props for a friend. And that'll get me back into working with Blender, because I haven't worked with Blender in a while either. Um, not only did my card die, but I didn't have enough RAM to deal with everything. So as soon as I had the money, I bought a new card and I bought more RAM. So I'm excited to, to get back into 3D design and really mess with it. Uh, I've been using Blender and watching some tutorials for it. Um, mostly inspired because uh, GW never has war bosses in stock, so I wanted to design and print my own, um, just to use as a proxy. Um, and then that just led into, you know, the looking into other games and everything. So not only am I interested in uh, the one-page rules games, but um, I am very, very interested in Frostgrave, uh, which I found out about like a couple months ago, um, where it is like you create a wizard and uh, delve into a temple for treasure, and there's a bunch of different scenarios in it. You get to make an apprentice, you get to build the wizard from scratch, and then you get to hire eight um, models to join your warband. And it's all done through like a d20 system. So instead of having a bunch of d6s to roll, you use a d20. And it's just so very simple, straightforward, and clean. Um, it also it just looks so satisfying to play. So I'm hoping to be able to jump into a game on that um, to get a feel for it.
but so as far as um, the actual subject of this video goes, uh, Raikonor, like I said, I went back and forth on a lot of things, but I am very happy with how it came out, even though edge highlighting with moon dust, I think I blobbed it a bit too much. Um, it was very exhausting, like I said, it did take me about seven hours, about three-ish hours on the horse alone, and then another three, three and a half hours on Raikonor himself, and um, the statue they're, they're kind of coming out of, and the base and everything. It's the thing I like about the Night Haunt army is their bases are already kind of done. Um, I have started basing my minis, I've been using a plaster and water and glue to make like a terrain paste and then doing some speed paint over the top of it um and then grass snow sand whatever um but it's nice to have just a pre-molded base that you can kind of just paint on top of and and it look really nice so for Raikonor himself um He's going to have a very similar design to the uh, Dreadblade Harrows, where I'm going to be doing Uniform Grey and Necromancer Cloak on his coat. Um, he's going to have Weapon Bronze for his shoulder pads, his mask, and uh, his scythe. And I went back and forth for a little bit on it about how his mask should be, if I should do a pure white mask, if I should do something, uh, if it should be black, or if I should do some sort of design on it. But I really like the idea of a bronze one. I think it looks more like a death mask um, to have the metallic on it. Um, and then he's gonna have toxic mist and fog gray uh, for his body. So his hands, his wisps, everything. Um, yeah, he's pretty straightforward. It is interesting that no matter how large the models look in the Night Hunt army, they're all the Night Hunt themselves are all relatively the same size, um, except for the what's it called? It's one of the behemoths. I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, uh, every one of them are are pretty much the same mortal size. Uh, which I think is interesting. So yeah, even if, even at times four speed, uh, this video did come out to be a bit over an hour, so uh, that's why I was kind of rambling about, you know, what's been going on with me, what I wanted to do for this paint uh, scheme, and just my thoughts on wargaming in general. Um, yeah, I think, I think the hobby has a lot of room to grow. I am excited to see what One Page Rules does. They are coming out with like a new set. They come out with STLs and you can buy their printed models. Um, but they just either just or they are releasing um, a new model line for Age of Fantasy uh, that has to do with the Saurians. Um, so the fact that they're getting character models and giving them stories and doing like a campaign around them is very exciting. Um, their models look great. I, I can't wait to buy the STLs and print them myself. Um, especially for the Saurians. The Saurian Star Host, um, that's another thing that I thought was really cool, is that uh, the Lizardmen, the Rat Folk, um, they're also represented in, in the Grimdark Fantasy, not just Age of Fan- or Grimdark Future, not just Age of Fantasy. Um, the Saurian Star Host is an army I'm very interested in putting together and playing. Uh... Yeah, Parabellum has just come out with a new faction, their Sorcerer Kings, which I'm sort of waiting to see more about what they look like. Um, their models were pretty good. Their plastic did seem a bit more brittle 
than GW models, and they do have mold lines pretty heavy on them, but at their detail is really good, and they're pretty easy to put together. So I enjoyed the two kits that I bought. I might consider buying more kits. Um, I think more than anything, I'm just going to start 3D printing armies and putting together one-page rules and frost grave uh, lists and just trying to get uh, friends and, and people local to play with.
So finishing up this model, uh, there is a ton of detail on the base and I start with the three colors that I like to use for the um, dirt tones and go through all the cracks. Then I go through dark stone on top of the cobblestone. Then I go necromance, necrotic flesh, and um, skeletal bone uh, for all the marble work. And then I do necromancer cloak on the candles. And then, um, or no, no, no. Kraken skin on the candles, necromancer cloak for the flames. Um, and I did a thin coat on the skeletal statue because the way that it sat with the eucalyptus primer base coat, um, it's just really nice. It gives it like a weird glowy look, um, kind of like you'd think a possessed statue would do. Um, I did dry brush some white on the one wing that's still standing because as you see and I did do some dry brushing of silver because uh, as you can see the wing looks like it's kind of coming to life at least there's feathers kind of floating down from the wing that's extended so I'm taking that to mean that the statue is somehow materializing into a real thing and just did a bit of dry brushing to add detail to it if if that was the interpretation to take um only other things to do are the roots which were green skin and then i believe i did a, a highlight of um snake scale uh the roses were done in dragon red and there's just random bits here and there um before I went over the whole thing with like the mid-brown wash because that makes if I'm doing pillars and marble and stuff I think it looks very good as a wash it makes it look very old and withered weathered and um, the last thing I do is matte black around the base to just kind of seal it all in um, and make it look nice and clean
uh, here is how he turned out. Like I said, it was a very long process for him, um, but I'm very happy with the results. And um, I've got a few more videos that I need to work on that will probably come out uh, as they come out. Um, but yeah, if anyone is watching, I appreciate you. I um, hope you liked it and I hope it maybe inspired you to either check out a new game or try a similar paint scheme. Um, but thank you for watching.